Hey guys, Jesse here with another tiny toot. Uh, this is how we do. I know it's been a while since I've done one of these, but um, I've been busy. I've been out. I've been trying to have a life like, like a real boy. Um, yesterday, I said on Facebook that I was recording a new tutorial and looking for ideas. And um, Tyler asks, uh for your normal color grading techniques and coloring process well that is a great question tyler and you are in luck because that's what we're talking about today color correction and maybe a little color grading now there is a difference between the two color grading is all of the creative artistic stuff you do to an image to elicit a certain feeling or emotion uh color correction is more on the technical side getting your image technically correct and it and my workflow is always do color correction first and then start playing around with the color grading on top of that so the first thing i want to talk about uh, is setting levels oh my goodness if you guys just set your levels your footage that's like 90 percent of getting stuff to look right. It's just making sure you've got the level set. So there's a lot of people out there shooting on DSLRs or shooting with special like uh, low contrast profiles on their camera to eke out the maximum dynamic range out of their camera. And that's a great technique to use, uh, but it does mean that when you pull your footage into a timeline, it's generally gonna look a bit drab and um, desaturated. So you really really need to take the time to do color correction to get the most out of your image so first let's talk about setting your levels and and maybe correcting uh, underexposed clips and then we'll talk about fixing uh white balance errors and then maybe we'll do a little a little bit of the color grading but before we do that i need you to know what this is this thing right here is called a waveform monitor. Now I'm editing in Premiere and to get that to pop up, uh, you open a reference monitor and then you can click this little menu here and select all sorts of different scopes. Um, let's go to look at the waveform monitor first. Now, it's important to know how this thing works. This is a visual uh, representation of the brightness values in your image or the luminance values. Brightness and luminance are the same things. So zero is pure black, 100 is pure white. So probably the easiest way to explain that is to open up uh, an image like this. This is just a little graphic file I made in Photoshop here. It has a white feathered circle in the center. It goes from black feathers into pure white. And you can see that represented over here on the waveform with this, this mountain in the middle zero um is is black at the bottom and then it goes all the way up to 100 which is pure white on the top and you can see this gray circle is represented right here on uh just above line 50 so it's somewhere in the middle this white circle over on the right is all the way up here at 100. so the waveform is mapped left to right as you can see here and then depending on how bright that portion of the image is it it's up or down it's mapped up or down now um, what's even handier than a waveform monitor for color correction is the rgb parade which is is essentially a waveform monitor for every different color channel your image is made up of three different color channels red green blue so the first thing i can tell by looking at this rgb uh, parade here is that uh, i have this space between just above line 80 and 100 where there really isn't any info there's some info on the red channel there's nothing in the green channel and then the blue channel there's nothing here either and, and looking at the clip i can see that it, it looks a bit dark it's underexposed so um when you set levels the goal the goal of setting levels is to make sure that the things in your picture that are supposed to be black actually are black and the things that are supposed to be white actually are white. And if you set the bottom and the top, the middle tends to tends to fall in line. There's a bunch of different powerful color correcting softwares out there like DaVinci Resolve and you know uh, Base Light System and all of that stuff. But I'm staying in Premiere and I tend to like Magic Bullet looks because it has just a bunch of wonderful tools. Um, 
And so I'm going to use magic bullet looks to uh, make color corrections, to set my levels here. So I've applied that filter and opened it. Let's pull open the first tool and the most common tool that I use uh, in looks is the three-way color corrector. And this is what I use to set uh, lift, gamma, and gain. Now they're not labeled lift, gamma, and gain anymore. They were in an older version of, of this, but that's a common term that you will hear uh, and see in color correcting softwares. Uh, but it's another way to say uh, shadow, midtone, highlight. The lift is where the black levels are. Gamma is where the midtones live and gain is the highlight. So the first thing I'm gonna do, keeping an eye on my RGB parade over here, is uh, I'm gonna raise the highlights because uh, I can see I've got room to spare. So I'm gonna push them all the way up until the red channel just touches 100, or here it's zero to one, but it's, it's the same scale, it's the decimals moved over. One thing to note, it is bad to go above that. See here, anything above 100 is clipping. It's blown out. There's no information there anymore. So your goal is to, is to keep your parade in legal limits so you do not get arrested and thrown into prison. That was a really lame joke. Uh, so don't go over 100. So the first thing I do is I, I set the highlights to where they're just kissing uh, 100. And then I will set the shadow level to where I can see the data just barely touching the zero line. Now, you have to keep in mind what type of image uh, you're working on. If there should be bright whites in your image, because, like for this example, there's a white helmet. So yes, there should be white in your image and there should be black in my image because there is uh, there are shadows here uh, in the rocks. If I'm color correcting a brick wall that neither has highlights or shadows, it's just like a flat br brick wall, you don't necessarily want to put your highlights at 100 and your, your low lights at zero because that would not be correct. That, that image lives in a different space. Okay, so it still looks underexposed to me and I'm I'm running out of room with highlights here because if I go if I try to brighten it with the highlights I'm blowing out uh certain areas of the image here. So let's up the gamma. The gamma or the midtones are this area in the middle and watch when I bring this up the the shadows stay relatively anchored and the highlights stay relatively anchored but the whole middle section comes up. Now, there is a relationship between all three of these sliders, and as I bring the gamma up, I might have to bring shadows back down just to keep my contrast set. Another thing that happens when uh, lifting the gamma is it tends to desaturate the image. So I'm going to flip over and grab the saturation tool here and just bump the saturation just a little bit. Okay, let's have a look before and after. That is a more correct looking image. It's not as underexposed. White is closer to where it should be. The shadows are closer to where they should be. And we can check again our reference monitor. Okay, so that that is setting levels. I didn't make any color adjustments to this clip. I just set the levels. So the next clip is something uh, we shot in Mexico last year. And I don't, again, I don't know how to use my camera. And so I had the white balance set incorrectly on this clip. Um, so let's fix that. So I want to, so I want to add magic bullet looks to this. And I'm going to use the three-way color corrector to fix this bluish color cast. Now looking over at the RGB parade, I can see that my blue channel is coming up way higher than my red and my green channel. And I know uh, that that is incorrect. Now, this flag, the center of this flag here is supposed to be white. And obviously it can't possibly be white if there's so much blue in, in that area. This part 
of the RGB parade corresponds to the brightest section in my image. So, uh, and it's right in the middle. So it's probably the sky here, which should be closer to white and a little bit of this flag as well. So grabbing, go over to tools and grab the three-way color corrector. Uh, and now we're gonna set the levels in a similar way that we did on the first clip, except I'm going to set them individually for each channel. Okay, so my goal here is to get the tops of these channels relatively even and get the bottoms relatively even as well. And if I do that correctly, it should correct this uh, awful color cast I have right now. Uh, I see that the top of the red channel needs to come up, so I'm gonna grab the highlights and move that up closer to where blue is. I'm gonna do the same for green. It's already looking better. Uh, and then let's grab everything and move it down. Okay, it's looking a little dark still. So let's up the gamma a little bit. And I think we can go a little bit higher with the gain. That'll help brighten it a little bit. Um, okay, so we're getting close. We're getting closer. I can see that I might need to make a mid-tone adjustment as well. So what I'm looking at is this building over here on the left-hand side. And that building is living in the mid-tones. And I know that building... Uh, from memory, it was concrete colored, which is basically gray. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and assume that the, this section of each of these channels corresponds to the building. And I can see that I've got a little bit of extra blue and green and a little less red. So what I'm going to do is go over to midtones and boost the red up a little bit. Now, I, I should probably tell you that um, I am colorblind. So I really do rely on these, these scopes and there are some wonderful tools built into Magic Bullet Looks that help me to make sure I'm in, I'm in the right area. One of my favorite tools is the skin tone overlay right up here, click that. And what this does is it puts a grid over anything that is currently skin tone colored. Now, skin tone is a memory color it's we all know what skin tone should look like because we've spent the last hundred and fifty thousand years staring at skin tone colored faces so right now i don't see don't really have a very strong skin tone happening over my skin tones here which tells me i still have a little too much blue going on so i'm going to go to the mid-tones here and turn the mid-tone channel down just a little bit more and you can see the grid start to grow over these faces which tells me that those faces are now living in a skin tone world okay so here's before and after and you know I think that is pretty close yeah I dig that that's good enough okay so now we have corrected this shot, which I shot at tungsten preset, and it was actually outside, which is why it looked so blue to begin with. And so after some color correction, now we have a correct looking shot. Maybe, maybe there's, maybe there's even a little, a little touch of warmth to that shot right there. So that kind of leads us into the color grading. Okay. So color, we've done some color correction. Now let's do some color grading and i'm gonna i'm gonna just whiz through this real quick because i know this tutorial is already getting pretty long so uh here's a clip of a, a nice gentleman looking at his uh smartphone when he actually should be watching the sidewalk in front of him if you follow my work you know what spot this is from all right i'm gonna throw looks magic bullet looks on there let's open it up now we already know the first thing we're gonna do is set the levels Okay, so this this particular spot, I want I want a uh, a morning kind of a warm morning light feel to it. So uh, there's all sorts of wonderful tools in Magic Bullet Looks that uh, will allow you to get 
creative. The first thing I might do on this is put a little uh, vignette on it, just a subtle vignette to draw your eye to the middle of the frame. So drag vignette over the image here and reposition it. And it's a little strong for my taste. So I'm gonna turn the strength down and I might bring the exposure compensation up a little bit. All right. Now, uh, there's a lot of skin tone in this with his face. Let's turn the skin tone overlay on. And I can see that we're not quite, it's there, but it could be stronger. So uh, one way to correct that is skin tone tends to live in the, in the mid tones. I can drop the blue down a little bit, or you can look over here at this particular graph, which has memory colors in it, and it'll show you that uh, we've got some skin tone in that area. Uh, another cool tool for getting your skin tones right is the, over on the post tab, it's called ranged HSL, which stands for hue, saturation, and lightness. This allows you to pull out individual colors from your image and change their hue, change their saturation, or change how light or dark they are. I'm going to use this tool to uh, make his blue shirt a little more saturated. And then I'll turn the skin tone overlay on and uh, grab this particular orange up here. Uh, it relates directly to skin tone. So I can basically, um, dial in just the skin tone portion of this image and change the saturation, modify the hue. And if you do this with skin tone overlay on, it, it can be sometimes helpful uh, if you wanna try to like dial in and make sure your image is a little more technically correct. So, oh, what else, what else? Oh yes, I want this to be warmer. Let's use this warm cool filter. We'll just drop that on there and bring it over a little bit onto the warm side. That's looking kind of cool. Um, and then maybe a little more contrast. This is all season to taste stuff. Like I said, my goal is sort of a warm morning golden light, um, you know, very commercial feeling, very happy, happy. Uh, so that's informing the decisions I'm making with what I'm doing to the color right now. So I tend to use the three-way color corrector, the vignette um, and curves tools. I try to keep it as simple as possible. I think really the more pushing you do on an image, if you don't know what you're doing, you can actually kind of screw up your image a lot quicker than you can correct it. All right, so I've added a little bit of mid-tone boost, a little bit of highlight boost, you can see I'm still within my limits over here, so I don't have anything blowing out. Yeah, I kind of like that. So let's look at a before and after. Uh, so here's after and there's before. So you can see that there's more contrast in the image. It's warmer. Um, levels are where they should be. So in summary, what have we learned? Uh, when you're finished editing your piece, and you've got the picture locked, meaning you're not gonna be making any more editorial changes, go through clip by clip and set the levels on every clip. You may think that your, your footage looks good already, but it could be just that you've been staring at it for so long and you've gotten used to how it looks uncolor corrected. So go through, use an RGB parade or a waveform monitor to make sure that your levels are set correctly and do that for every single clip because that's gonna make a massive difference in the final quality of your piece. So uh, we've learned how to set levels and correct uh, exposure issues, uh, how to fix white balance issues. And then I did a little bit of, uh, a little bit of creative color grading on this last clip. Um, I have a feeling this 